So I'm here to convince you to embrace UI um, because it has never been easier to learn. Um, UI, as you see in the picture here, this is a freeway. Many UIs that you, uh, you know, explore and test out like your shoelaces or things like that are not scary. This one is scary. My grandma, my great grandma, let me uh, qualify that, she uh, never got on the freeway because she refused to merge. Merging freaked her out. And that's understandable. I feel like merging is scary. Driving next to a semi-truck scares me a lot. You know, um, Those are scary interfaces. You had to learn to read the signs. You had to follow the path, stay between the lines. Many of the same rules that apply to software in any sort of interface. So here's uh, some 1930s interface. This is everybody on their humongous iPad. Uh, <laughs> you know, and look at that. You know, we complain about this. But look, they're doing it there. And it was normal then. You know, and I think that uh, this is okay. They're connecting. This is their means of connecting with their city, with their country, with whatever. Um, and you know, they're sitting next to another human, but they might not know him. Anyway, I just think that was really interesting. This is from the movie Road to Perdition. Here's another interface. This is a trail. We've all gone on a hike. It starts with a little sign that says this way. You know, there's an arrow that points you somewhere, and then you see a trail. You follow the trail because your goal is to get to a successful viewpoint where you get optimized or optimal view of the entire sort of uh, wherever you're headed, you know, the mountain or what. And uh, I just wanted to point out that a trail is an interface that someone created for you. A teapot is an interface. You had to learn how to use it. This one is cool because it's also beautiful. And it's really interesting when places like Bauhaus and these um, really artistic design places made functional things beautiful. And I find that really, really elegant. Like, you know, Steve Jobs, he was all about that too. It's functional and elegant. I'm not a huge iPhone um, fanatic, you, you could call, but he does make gorgeous things, right? They, they're functional and they, they feel good, they look good. And I think that's really important that interfaces are no longer these sort of old clunky things. They're now elegant and uh, reduced into the bare minimum that gives you exactly what you need. I call this a transparent interface because you all get in your car, you turn it on, it's the same thing as starting an app. Except when you start your car, it rumbles and you smell it if you drive a 70s Firebird like I did. You know, like these things become part of the experience of that interface. That's a big steel interface. And it even has interfaces inside of it where like your passenger gets in and he straps himself in and he adjusts the vents or something, right? These are all interfaces inside of interfaces. These were not scary, but they took a learning, and you know, that's okay. So a lot of people talk about the cloud, and I wanna talk about the cloud because technology is so rad that this is the cloud. If you're wondering what happens to your file when you shoot it up to a satellite and it goes into Antarctica iceberg, it's hit in a Google server room probably like this. They keep them in ice because they get really hot. All your files are going in and out of them all day. You know, it makes sense, but that's the cloud. So your cloud is a physical space. So if you're wondering where does all my media, where does all my stuff go, it's still somewhere that you can get to. And I wanna talk about Google and just really quick, I mean, Google's an incredible thing. I could do a whole speech on how cool Google is, you know, cause I'm a nerd. But uh, it's really cool to note that Google automatically updates. When you visit there and you hit a search for something and you want the most relevant information, it is always the most relevant information. 20 years ago when I wanted to go get uh, some information about I don't know, some historical topic, I had to go grab an Encyclopedia Britannica, something that was printed at a year. Now, if the information changes, I have to go get the newer version, and it cost me money. Now, what's really cool about Google is uh, it doesn't cost me any money, and I get information, it's the newest all the time. And uh, I wanna point out too that the Tesla car that's coming out that's very controversial because it's replacing a lot of hardware with software. And by replacing hardware with software in your car, you get automatic updates. Imagine if your carburetor could update itself. You're now on V2, right? It's now more effective, more efficient. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so modern UI. So modern UI, okay, so we went through all these phases of UI, like this one here. Uh, hopefully you guys recognize this AOL Instant Messenger or just AOL Mail in general. This was really cool though because uh, you felt connected when you logged on and it said, you've got mail. And you're like, that was the most exciting thing that's ever happened on my computer. Like, I've got mail, how cool is that? But look at the interface. Look how they've thrown everything in front of you. It's like uh, they thought it was easier if you could see every button at all times. And what we've learned is that, um, well here, let me go down to modern mail. 
Modern mail is an entire reduction. All you know is, who am I writing to? Do I want to take a picture and send it in the message? Mind blown. Who would have thought that you could just snap one and send it? I mean, now we have Snapchat. It's like I could, I could send you all right now to my friends and my family. You know, and they get it. And I think that's really cool. And I love that interfaces have gone away with all of the Chrome or all of these things that are irrelevant to the things that you need. And all of these points I'm getting at is that interfaces are easier than they've ever been. Um, Steve Jobs had a, a, a concept for the iPad called skeuomorphism, where he said, uh, I want to make, so make interfaces just like the ones you use in real world so that they're more familiar, like your calendar. The calendar in the iPad is a leather-bound top. When we turn a page, you can see the page curl. Like he thought that that was going to bridge the gap between why people are sort of not taking on more iPads. And we see iPads getting more popular now because software and interface is getting much better. But I love his concept of skeuomorphism. Try to make software as much to real life as you can. And it ended up being really limiting, so it, it didn't quite make it. And I want to talk about guided tours. And th this is the new user manual. When you bought a VCR, you bought a DVD player back in the day, what did it come with? A big fat manual in six languages or whatever. And you never read it because it was confusing. It was like tech Nicole Nicole talk. Why, I can't read this stuff. I can't hardly read that stuff. It's boring. It sucks. And now you open up an app and it's like, hey, welcome to the app. Let me take you through the features that I have for you. You know, and this one is called Ucky and it's a journal for your child's life. So you've got, I mean, people journal their child's life all the time, but now if you do it digitally, you can share it wherever you are. And this one's cool because it opens up and it says, here's how you take a picture, here's how you write about you know, your child in the moment, and here's how the diary works. And these things are just really cool that the manual is built into the product. Just kind of nifty. Um, and I'm kind of cool too. Here I'm using my iPhone to drive my presentation. Ooh. Actually, it's all because I needed a down arrow and all they had was left and right. So then I want to point out this. <laughs> it's true, I have a weird presentation. It's two-dimensional. Um, so this is a calendar, and it costs a dollar. And a lot of us look at apps and we're like, ugh, 99 cents, meh. You know, but in reality, <laughs> that's a dollar. And how much does your normal calendar cost? And you have to buy it again, and again, and again, and you have to rewrite everybody's birthday, meh. <laughs> you know, like, so things that you have like this, um, that you're refusing to sort of, uh, you know, join into your life, I highly encourage you to get them because you enter in a birthday once and it repeats. And you can set in a reminder so that, hey, seven days before that thing reminded me because I tend to forget. You know, I think that's really important that this costs a dollar and some of us refuse to buy them. You know, that's really interesting. And it's even better. I mean, it's better in a hundred ways. And that's another speech I don't want to get into. So now there's apps. So a lot of times apps get um, a bad rap, like they're taking us out of reality. And he did such an amazing job introducing Lively. Um, Lively was built on a few like really core concepts, but one of them was that, have you ever gone to a show that you left and you were like, man, I really want to copy that show? And that's what Lively does. Lively captures it, audio and video. You go home and you get the copy of it like you were in the front row so that you can be in the back and not smell the sweaty dudes and uh, go home and rewatch it on your big screen TV. You know, cast it from your phone to the screen and watch it in high res. It's super incredible. Um, and we also saw that a lot of people at, at shows were you know, looking at the show through their phone, capturing pictures and video, and then the person behind you is like, I can't see through your phone. And we're like, we need to solve that, that sucks. You know, artists don't like it. So anyway, there's apps that are encouraging connections so that you're in the moment. There's things that apps can't replace, like your five senses. Uh, and here's one of my most favorite um, applications that connects people, and this is Kickstarter. I guess you can't really see the, uh, the logo up there. Um, and if you haven't heard of Kickstarter, you really need to go check it out. It's basically people saying, here's my idea, and uh, uh, in order for me to launch this idea, I need X amount of money. And if you all can help me uh, reach this amount of money, I'll give you some sort of value out of the product. Uh, maybe you either get an early version or I give you credit. Um, but you help me fund my own invention. And I, I love this site because I get to go help other inventors, other idea people create stuff for like two bucks. You know, and then you see things like this, like the wireless smart headphones. These are Bluetooth-enabled earbuds that are waterproof. They, they do all sorts of crazy stuff. And look, at he was like, I only need $260,000, and he's at $2 million. He might have gone to, uh, you know, some bigwigs that had a bunch of money for funding, and they turned him down because they didn't like the idea. And he said, 
okay, wait, no, this is a good idea. I'll take it to Kickstarter. And pff, gets two million bucks. Now he's got a really great product. I think that's incredible. These are some of my favorite products are the ones that I get to help start. And then this is, this is what's cool. All this technology, all this stuff is like coming into this moment now where you're no longer just connecting with your friends and your family and your peers instantly. You know, we have video chat. We've all been kind of getting adjusted to that. Now this is, this is two, 2014. This is going to be the year of smart things. And this is one of the most exciting things for me, and especially on Kickstarter. The phones are getting so small. Wireless stuff is getting so small that now your air freshener or your air purifier in your home can now connect to your phone and tell you what's the humidity you can check it from home. You can change its speed from home, right? These things are just really cool. Uh, eggs go bad, and they tell you on your phone. <laughs> What's really, you think that's funny? There's diapers. You don't like this smell a baby diaper? Me neither. There's a little patch you can put on that'll send you a message. Hey, your baby pooped. <laughs> Never smell a diaper again. That guy is solving a good problem. Smart cars, I, I have this one. I drive to work and I drive home. I do all these things and it keeps track of how long my trip was, how many miles it took. It tells me gas mileage. If I get in a wreck and I get hurt, this thing automatically calls family members. Really cool technology. It'll even tell someone when I arrive at my destination, you know, I'm driving 18 hours. I get home, I forget to call my mom. That will tell her for me. Then there's social, social uh, smart things, like this little wristband I have. This thing makes uh, being fitness with your friends like fun and cool. Like I get to go see how active my developer buddies are. You can imagine we're very active. <laughs> so my, my wife, she's here somewhere. She's like, you know, way up on the charts running every day. And then there's me sitting in my chair and I'm like 300 steps, you know, like <laughs> poo, I'll get there later. Anyway, it's just really cool that like a little wristband can make taking steps social and fun. Um, just blows my mind. So and I want to get to this, uh, this point, which is, um, you know, no one really likes clutter around the home. Nobody likes a hoarder. <laughs> you know, that's really fun to watch hoarders. You're like, look at that hoarder. <laughs> but we all hoard. We hoard one thing or another. And I want to be a proponent of hoarding in the cloud. You know, take all your stuff and take anything that has really uh, nice meaning to you or all these books, all these things. All those books fit in a phone now. You know, um, let's see. I think there's a nice little picture here. Yeah. I hope this guy knows that all this stuff fits in his pocket now. You know, like, it's true. You've got a wall of, you could do anything with that wall because all that stuff on the wall fits in your phone now. Free up space in your life. Free up space with other people by hoarding in the cloud. I encourage you to just take more pictures, take more video, just stick it in the cloud, stick it in those Google server form, farms. That's what they're there for. Um, and so what's my takeaway? What's the takeaway from the speech? It's not that, like, technology is super cool. You guys know that. It's not that, um, you know, Embrace UI is very much the overarching thing I'm trying to communicate, but... Really, it's that modern technology is incredible, and interfaces are not new to humans, right? We saw the newspaper, we saw trails, we saw all these things have been getting invented since the first tool. Stuff on paper is dead data, and I, and I mean that by like uh, your calendar on your fridge is only viewable by the people next to your fridge. You know, the, the photo album that you have at home next to your couch is only available to the people sitting next to you in uh, the couch. But if you make these things digital, they, they follow you wherever you go, and you can share them at any time it's more convenient, right? You find yourself in a little downtime somewhere, hey, let's go through the photo album I have. Like, that stuff's really powerful, that the things you write on paper stay where you wrote them. And uh, I want to encourage you to get rid of some of this dead data and make things more shareable and, more, and connect with other people. The calendar one is really cool for me because I love inviting friends to events because then I know they know what time it starts. You know, if they're late, I'm like, dude, I sent you the event and you said yes. What the heck? Anyway, uh, set things once with modern replacements. You only have to write a, you know, calendar reminder once, a birthday once, uh, a to-do to reminder once. Like a grocery list is a really good example. A lot of things, you, you know, you go to the grocery store, you buy the same things many times. You don't have to crumple up that paper and throw it away every time. If you make it digital, you just cross it off. And then when you're done, uncross them for the next time you go back. Um, be smart about the way that you can use some of these things. Uh, the 2014, you, you know, the year of smart connected things. I'm really excited to see all the new stuff that comes out. Not the more baby diapers, but there's like incredible smart things entering your home. And there's smart locks. There's smart uh, smoke detectors. There's anyway, there's smart everything. And I'm really excited about that because it kind of puts it all here. This is like the central unit for all of these smart things. Remove clutter and hoard in the cloud. 
but, you know, I think that one's pretty obvious. Video chat more often because that is just incredible. Imagine 10 years ago, I'm going to video chat with you and they're, pff, no way, you can't do that. Now all of a sudden it's here through our phone, I can like video chat this whole thing. I think that's really incredible. Do that more often. You actually, you can connect with people in other states instantly through video. You can see each other smile. It's way better than the phone. Anyway, uh, and let technology give you more time with people because it really is a lot of these things. These people are making these technology, they're making this software so that you have more time to be a human. And that's where um, one of the really big takeaways that I have for this is that data and media is cheap and fast. We know this because it goes to space and it goes to an iceberg and goes back to space and to my phone and before I can blink my eye, right? So if data is so fast and data is so cheap and all these things are getting smart, what's important? Empathy is uncreatable. Our phones and all these smart things will never replace the humans in us. The way that we can empathize and listen and feel for things. Those algorithms, well, I'll try, I'll tell, I'll try to make them, they are insanely difficult and will not happen for a very long time. So don't be scared that technology is gonna take over any sort of emotional connection you have with people. That is uncreatable. And that is my speech.